Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our regular weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So today, Franklin, we're talking about, let's start with the election results. Yes, we had our uh, uh, town elections on Tuesday, uh, and it was uh, rather revealing. Uh, uh, for the first, uh, last year, we remember that uh, two school committee members were uh, two incumbents, or one incumbent and one person who was appointed. Um, they were replaced by, by, by outsiders. Um, and it, and there was a number of people who, were, who uh, lost their seats on uh, town meeting. So did, were we going to see a continuation of this um, uh, move towards a new blood? Well, it turned out no. Um, what we had is that the, on the board, on the uh, select board, um, Roy Epstein retained his seat by a comfortable margin, two to one, more than two to one. Over, now, Franklin, uh, let me a- Franklin, let me ask you if that was a surprise. No, it wasn't a surprise, but but the margin was. I mean, uh, you know, M- Mr. Lassiter had the backing of a group uh, that's called Citizens for, for, for a Financially Responsible Belmont. Uh, which uh, had, which is um, becoming a much more involved group within town, um, and they supported him and, and did so uh, quite virulently. Uh, <laughs> what they did is they they, they backed him um, uh, for for in his race, um, <clears throat> but that didn't seem to work. Uh, that backing um, uh, and um, also um, uh, Jeff Geibel. Uh, uh, who was running for the um, a light board, the two-year light board, um, uh, as a uh, who who got the backing of, of uh, Marie Warner, who was the vice president of of that group. Uh, he lost also by a All good right. margin. I, I wasn't aware that he was affiliated, but that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not affiliated, but they, he received the backing of that group. I see. Now, so the group actually doesn't back any candidate. It's the individual uh, people within the group that have been backing them. And that kind of gives legitimacy towards uh, towards the idea that they are being backed by that group. Um, and uh, and <clears throat> so we saw um, also um, the other competitive race, which was uh, uh, Julie LeMay uh, re- uh, uh, retaining her seat on the uh, uh, board of Health uh, by a pretty uh, a good margin, 800 votes. Um, and uh, what we also saw is that we're talking about that group of the citizens for um, a responsible Belmont, uh, fiscally responsible Belmont. They took a they took a little bit of a beating on uh, uh, at town election when Marie Warner, who was the vice president, and Don McCarran, uh, who is the president, lost their seats. They were incumbents on the town town meeting and they lost their seats. That that that's interesting. Um, any uh, you know what did they lose their seats by a big margin? Uh, well, well, um, uh, uh, twenty two votes, but you know, for one person, I believe it was another one was just a couple of votes. But still, you know, it was uh, they did lose um, uh, their seats. Uh, their uh, the secretary of that organization, Allison Link, uh, won her seat by one vote. I mean, one vote could have changed the the results, and she could have also been off the board. So. Um, it was a it was a tough night for them. They also lost a number of incumbents who were on the town meeting. Also, uh, they did gain one uh, prominent member who was an original contributor, uh, uh, an original person who supported them. So um, it, it was kind of revealing, you know, what actually occurred uh, that people no longer uh, was going to support this group. Was it uh, some of the comments that uh, Jeff Lasseter, who was running for the select board? Was it some of the things that he said, uh, such as, you know, um, we can run the schools for $10 million less, you know, and people were then asking, like, where are you going to find the $10 million? And there was never really a res- an answer to that. Um, I don't know if um, he dragged them down or, or they dragged him down. So uh, it w- we'll know and we'll, we'll see what, what, what occurs in the future. Uh, they, they, they do have, um, they are a, uh, a group that, um, you know, is now a formed uh, organization. So um, they, they'll be around. Okay, Franklin. So so um, in a non-competitive race, we also saw a new person elected to the school committee. That's right, Jeff Liberty, who has a great background. In, he, I mean, he, he has an education back, background from being a teacher to being an administrator to being a founding member of, a, uh, of, a char- in, of an in-Boston charter school. So he has a lot of uh, ideas, and uh, we'll see uh, how he contributes to the uh, the uh, six-member board. 
All right, a very interesting election all the way around. Um, Franklin, I wanna ask you, um, um, there, there's some potential news about um, uh, developments for the um, new skating rink. What can you tell us? That's right. Uh, well, we got our, uh, the, uh, the uh, committee that is looking at the rink design uh, had their first public meeting or they were looking for public comment about uh, the very first rough sketches uh, on where on what would be built in on west of Harris Field, basically. So uh, the person, of course, is uh, um, uh, Ted Gal Galante, who is uh, the person who also, he's the architect, and he was the person who developed the uh, police station and the DPW yard very successfully. Okay. So he came down, and it, basically what he was, uh, he was told is, here's a piece of paper, design some things for us. Now, one thing that he's added to what was previously thought about in that area is a redeveloping or just, you know, using the uh, basic structure of the current rink and building on that. And, um, and uh, that, you know, he would use the steel barriers, you know, the, those big steel um, uh, arches that they have and some other things, you know, but a lot of that would be a complete gut rehab. Uh, he had the, he had his designs also for a uh, field, for uh, two designs that were, per one was perpendicular to the rink currently, very close to Harris Field. The other one was way uh, behind the, the, uh, the service station, the mobile so service station. But the most interesting one he had was um, one that would be uh, right on Concord Avenue. You would have 90 par parking spaces underneath the building. You'd have the, you would then have the rink and on top, you could either have uh, five tennis courts or you could have a uh, photo um, uh, vo voltaic uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> photo vo voltaic well, solar, pan thing. So solar panels. So solar panels. That's right. Um, that seemed to get a, a, a lot of uh, people's interest. Um, now, um, there are a lot of people who uh, still support the tennis courts who would like to see tennis courts on top or on the side. So, um, uh, it was just, but again, this is just really rough sketches. You know, he just wanted to hear what people thought about it. And uh, he's going to come back and they will be presenting to town meeting in June, a final design or, or he, or as the uh, chairman said, uh, Mark Haley, two designs. So, so the town or the select board can then uh, decide which one they would want. And of course it has to be uh, vetted by the school committee to also, you know, it, right. what will happen is, is that the school committee will decide which they want and the select board will decide how we're going to pay for it. And that most likely will be a debt exclusion. What's interesting too, uh, given the controversy surrounding um, um, parking associated with the high school is, is uh, the incorporation of an underground parking garage in, in one of these designs. And and then what that would do it would free up a lot of space, you know, for to make sure that there's re a requirement that three fields are in that area west of of, of Harris Field, a uh, JV softball, JV baseball, and a JV soccer field. So that would help in that way. But it also you probably have enough space to maybe put five tennis courts in there. That if you do that underground. All but, right, but again, but again, there's this one thing you have to realize no one's uh, talked about cost on this, you know, how, how expensive is, is putting below grade parking in a, uh, in that area, you know, that might be a, a no go. I, I assume that would be costly. So uh, Franklin, let's, let's move on quickly. Um, I understand that Bob Upton is um, retiring. That's right. Bob Upton, who since uh, 2015 has been the uh, veterans agent for the town. He's been a, a, a uh, just a wonderful person for supporting veterans, and uh, he's really revamped it to make it a, a very effective um, uh, office. Uh, he's gone out, uh, you know. He's he's uh, he he ha he meets on a regular basis with veterans, telling them what their uh, benefits are, listen to their their concerns. He's also the person who's really responsible for the big events that we have in town, the um, especially the Memorial Day parade. He really does that by himself. And that's always a, a really successful event. So we're going to miss him. He's a, as uh, Don David said, uh, the, these are big shoes to fill. And uh, Don and David is, of course, the head of the um, uh, Board of Health, which is where um, Mr. Upton works uh, in. All right, Franklin, it's, it's, it's sad to see him go. Thank, thank you, Franklin. Uh, we'll see you next time. And if you'd like to see more of Franklin's reporting, be sure to visit Belmontonian.com.